The Mary Stuart Society commissioned the design of a maquette for the statue of Mary Queen of Scots from the sculptress Anne Davidson in 2007. Sadly, she died shortly afterwards, and the full-size sculpture based upon the maquette was commissioned from David Anand in 2014. The statue was forged at Powder Hall Bronze Foundry, Edinburgh. A steel armature is constructed as a base onto which the clay can be modelled. The armature includes flexible sockets to allow the sculpture to adjust the armatures. Once the pose has been decided upon, the armature is welded onto the supporting framework. Clay is then built up over the chicken wire surface. The supporting framework and surface needs to be strong enough to take the weight of the clay. The pose of the figure is altered if necessary as work progresses. Plaster is used to model areas of finer detail. Plaster is mixed with jute scrim for reinforcement and then built up to achieve the desired result. The bottom of the dress is cut off to allow the base detail to be formed. The first stage in the casting is to apply a thin coat of silicon rubber that picks up the fine detail on the sculpture. A hardener is added to the rubber to help it set. The silicon is painted onto the clay sculpture and can take up to four hours to set. A second coat is applied to which a thixotropic agent is added to build up the thickness of the coating. This is left to set before adding a third coat. Silicate oil is applied to help release the mould from a jacket of plaster. Plaster of Paris is used to hold the silicon mould. The casting is made in multiple sections with a draw on them that allows a cast to be taken without sections being hidden or held so that they then cannot be released from the mould. A thin coat of hot wax is painted onto the inner surface. Next, hot wax is poured into the mould called slushing and left for around 30 seconds to cool. This creates a thicker wax coating. The excess wax is then poured off. A runner riser system allows wax to escape as it melts in the kiln inside the investment mould. The same system later allows the molten metal to move around the mould and air to escape. Plaster and brick dust are mixed and poured into the mould. This stage is called investment of the core. The silicon and plaster mould is removed from the wax. The seam lines are worked with fine tools and soft modelling wax so that there will be no trace of them in the final cast. Stainless steel core pins are knocked into place to ensure the inner and outer moulds retain their relative positions when the wax is removed. The investment is then built up around the wax. The first layer is painted on. It is a hard plaster cream mixed with brick dust. Subsequent layers are then built up to reach a thickness of around 75 millimetres. Ludo is recycled mould material which is sieved and mixed with new casting plaster. The cast is then placed in the kiln which is at around 600 degrees for 48 hours. The water from the investment evaporates and the wax burns away, leaving a void. Once the moulds are taken from the kiln, they are wrapped in plaster and scrim. They are fragile at this stage and need to be supported before they are lowered into the pit. Here, sand is packed around the mould to catch any leaks and provide support. Ingots of silicon bronze are then melted in the crucible at 1160 to 1200 degrees centigrade. The dross is scraped back as pouring the molten bronze takes place. An even pouring is required to avoid air pockets. The moulds are then left to cool until the next day. The scrim is first removed, then the investment plaster. The cast is then given a power wash to remove the residual investment plaster. For relatively flat areas with not too much detail, sand casting is the most appropriate casting technique. Sand is mixed with a binder. Fine sand is then sieved over the patterns, then pressed down and compressed in a process called tamping. Holes are created in the sand into which CO2 is blown. This hardens the sand binder. A pouring hole is created along with air vents for the displaced air to escape. The molten bronze is then poured into the mould. This is left to cool before the sides of the moulding box are removed. The sand is then knocked off the moulded bronze. 
The runners and risers are cut off the cast bronze with angle grinders before the stubs are cut back to the surface of the bronze. The stainless steel nails are pulled out and the holes are TIG welded closed. Other tools used in this part of the process include a MIG welder, cutters, grinders, a chisel with a flat texture, a matting tool and die grinders. Buffing is then carried out to make sure all the detail is clearly visible. The process of patination, the coating of the surface to building up a dark penny bronze, is carried out by heating the surface with a blowtorch and then applying potassium sulphide diluted in water. The statue was unveiled in the grounds of Linlithgow Palace, Mary Queen of Scots's birthplace, on Saturday the 25th of April 2015.